This is ColorOS 15 port for the Realme GT2. The ROM has been ported from the OnePlus Ace 3, uh, which is a Chinese variant. Even though ColorOS is known as the Oppo's version of an Android skin, it is used by OnePlus uh, for the Chinese variants and even the Realme UI which Realme uses is a derivative of ColorOS. I have been using this ROM for over a week now and let me talk you through my usage experience and there is a lot of things to talk about this ROM. Starting out with the positives, it is based on Android 15 with the latest March security patch. The main highlight of this ROM is of course its refreshing looks, the animations are creamy smooth and you will feel that it is smoother than most of the custom ROMs out there. It is definitely an improvement over the stock Realme UI and it's also a breath of fresh air as compared to the AOSP based custom ROMs. Being an OEM ROM, you also get first party features like file dock, floating windows, island style icons etc. And I also love that you can change the volume from the control center itself without pressing the buttons. The general performance of this ROM is also very good with the you know, consistent app launch speeds and the smooth animations as I mentioned before. There is also some kind of video boost which seems to be working, you know when you watch a video the color seems to be a bit more poppy and it seems to be a little more contrasty with a more pleasing look. Compared to custom ROMs, the haptics are also very neatly integrated and every interaction feels very tight and very precise, the haptic feedback, so it's really nice. The basic functions are also work pretty well, the auto brightness is very good and the high brightness mode kicks in very early. BGMI has 90fps unlocked by default, uh, though the performance doesn't feel like 90fps all the time, it is unlocked so you know it, it has good enough performance. AI video works in the stock camera application and most of the first party you know things are working you do get a complete experience in that aspect and even though I encountered a little bit of heating when I initially set up the ROM it settled down quickly and from the second charge cycle onwards the ROM stayed relatively you know thermally under control there was no overheating or anything as such so if you do try out this ROM you know please have some patience just let the ROM settle down for a while uh, you can judge the ROM from the second day onwards the ROM is also heavily de-bloated so it does not come with any junkware like your stock Realme UI. It does not come with any hot apps or hot games. None of that, you know, unnecessary business here. The de-bloating does come with a catch which I will talk about in the next section. But yeah, it is a very, you know, minimal and clean experience out of the box. Anyway, the main highlight you will notice after installing this ROM is definitely the animations. You see the reviews of new phones which has those creamy smooth animations. The fast app launch speeds, you know, you see the people switching between apps and it's like very slick and smooth. This ROM provides the same experience in this phone which was a welcoming touch, you know, it was little unexpected and a breath of fresh air for me. I really enjoyed it. And I would say as compared to Realme UI, every single UI element is an improvement in this ROM. Uh, I have switched to Realme UI's, the stock ROM just to compare it. and. I would say every single element starting from the icons to the design of the volume panel, the you know system tray, everything, everything is an improvement in this ROM as compared to the stock Realme UI. It really feels like an evolution you know, I, I really think the uh, next version of Realme UI should adopt this theme. So those were the good things about the ROM, uh, you know basically it is the refreshing looks, the overall UI design the debloated nature and most of the first party applications. Now let me talk you through the not so good things, things are, that are not good but I am okay with. The major issue with this ROM that I faced is that not all banking applications work. And in my case Google Pay did not work but the Phone Pay and Beam did. So if you are a Google Pay user you would struggle to use this ROM. The ROM is also quite aggressive in its RAM management. So even to applications that you grant explicit background permission will get closed. I have two main examples over here, one is Franco Kernel Manager which comes as a system application in this, it does get closed once in a while. Second is Micro G that also gets closed in the background so once in a while you do have to open that uh, to you know make the applications that rely on it run. The battery life of this ROM is also not the best. In my usage the active drain fluctuated somewhere between 12 to around 16 percentage. And also the charge limiter worked for once but uh, you know it, it stopped working so even after enabling the charge limit it charges to full capacity. A small thing that could be the ROM related I, I really could not find out how to resize the widgets and being an OEM ROM you do miss out on features like unlimited google photos. The ROM also comes with a block and filter in the messaging application which is like your spam protection and sometimes it also blocks important messages so you have to whitelist some of your you know uh, important messages manually. It also requires contact permission to you know enable you to access the feature itself uh, which blocks the messages so so after you set up the ROM it starts blocking messages automatically and there is no way to unblock or stop it apart from granting the contacts permission first and proceeding to whitelist. 
and that is a theme that i have been noticing in this rom that is that uh, you know every single application or feature has its own terms and conditions it uh, which are, which it asks you to agree to to use it and even when setting up the rom it asks you like it's like literally like a three or four page or sections of you know permissions that you have to enable or features you enable which grants them the permissions that they need unfortunately i lost the screenshot of that so i'm sorry i'm not able to show it to you and then there is a place or two where you can spot some lag especially in the screen of animation and when you open the status bar on top of a video playback screen oh and if you are a bgma player the game will not recognize that you have already given the storage permission so you have to manually go to the file manager storage uh, you know into the android folder obb and delete the obb folder manually and reopen the game so that it will start downloading resources so these were the minor annoyances that i faced now let me talk you through the you know cons or the bugs or issues that i faced with this rom the major thing is the lack of some features like an like a default assistant like there is no way to trigger google assistant there is no gesture setting there is no hidden setting or anything like that the slog launcher also does not have google feed integration the deep loading has gotten rid of the game mode so there is no game mode there is also no digital well being and app timer so there is these are some features that are missing from this rom and the face unlock also did not work i don't i'm not sure if it's related to any permission that i did not grant uh, if you tap on set up the face it does not do anything and i also saw a small glitch where the image editor in the default gallery app it fails to save the image so these are the bugs that i faced in this rom so let's conclude uh, my overall usage experience of this rom and just to get a good reference uh, today the day i am winding up this review i actually installed the stock realme ui and compared to that i would say that this rom is almost in every way an improvement and evolution of that rom and uh, realme ui does feel like a step backwards i really do miss the you know more modern ui and a more polished feel the smooth animations and the overall more polished experience and even though there were some annoyances like google pay was not working uh, i do not strongly rely only on google pay so i was able to you know circumvent that problem even the battery life was not the best but it was just good enough for me so i did not feel like changing the rom or anything the gaming performance you know even though bgma had 90 fps unlocked by default i wouldn't say that it stayed at 90 fps all the time but it is more than good enough the performance was stable and it did not heat up too much or anything like that and overall i would say that this rom has a lot of quirks you know uh, like your google pay and all those stuff but overall i did enjoy the experience and i would say that for most people yes you can try out this rom and you will be pleasantly surprised how much better it is compared to the stock realme ui or in the animation department even compared to custom roms so that has been it from my side and if you have any questions or queries feel free to leave them in the comment section below and see you guys in the next one